I grew up down the coast, just south of Melbourne, with my mum and my little sister, always really close to my little sis. I remember mucking around on rollerblades and riding bikes after school and the one hill that I used to dink my sister down and terrify her because I'd go too fast and scabs on knees were kind of part of the uniform that you'd wear. I didn't really think too much about gender or my gender until I probably hit about grade four or grade five and I really started to feel those differences and how I just wasn't pegged as the same as all the other girls in my year level. In primary school it didn't matter when people mistook me for a boy but I remember starting secondary school there was a teacher actually who thought when I put my hand up in the class that I was a boy and just the way that everyone reacted that was like ultimate shame like I felt like a total weirdo. Everyone just had this incredible pressure to assimilate, to be the same. And I think we were all so focused on the things that made us different that you couldn't even notice other people's struggles because you were so concerned with blending in and erasing the parts of yourself that stood out. Yeah. My little sister Ro is all heart. She's very passionate. She's definitely the one that's kind of kept me on track and kept me on course and she takes great care of me. I just had the best thing happen. Yeah. I had this incredible conversation with this 12 year old. She's like so passionate about the issue of bullying. It wasn't long after finishing school that I remember just having a sister heart to heart about what school was like for each of us. We had really different experiences throughout school, but one of the things we had in common was seeing how painfully and how deeply the scars of bullying can cut and trying to work out what to do about it. Trying to work out in that moment, what do I say? How do I go against the grain? How do I stand up for what I believe in? Hey, how you doing? Hey. Hey. We just wished we'd been given some more support and education and there'd been more of a focus on how we can be empowered to do something in those moments rather than standing by watching. And we kind of figured, you know what? No one's doing anything about it. Maybe we could do something about it. So then my little sister and I came up with the idea for Project Rocket. Project Rocket is Australia's youth-driven movement against bullying, hate and prejudice. It's founded on a really simple idea and that's the vision of a world where kindness and respect thrive and every young person is free to realise their potential. We train young presenters to go into schools and have the kind of conversations we wish we'd had in school that actually empower you to do something when you see hate instead of standing by watching. Hi, hi. Hey everyone! Hi. What have we got on this week? Hi, this the one thing that qualified us to start Project Rocket was that we were young and we got it. And we just started one school at a time, started getting in there and convincing one teacher to become an advocate for their students and having a Project Rocket workshop. And that's how it grew. The important thing is that we want them to actually use the strategies once we leave. So I think a lot of what we've got to do is really unite everyone in the room so that they can always see each other in a brand new light and have respect and empathy so that they will use strategies and stand up. Pretty early on we started meeting other young people like us and we started hiring them to go out into schools all over the country and that's when things really started to take off. It was really important to us that we didn't hire people who were all the same because there are so many different groups who encounter hate in school. So today we have a passionate, young, growing, diverse team of incredible presenters. Well, I reckon like for the activities that we had, such as like chain of humans and like levels for us to get involved too. And if they see that we've made some mistakes in the past, they're not gonna be ashamed to participate too. Over the years there have been heaps of students that I vividly remember. There might be someone who had the guts to speak up and say the thing in the room that no one had the guts to say. And one of those students is Teresa. I went to a school that was predominantly white and it was really hard trying to fit in. Lucy came into my school when I was year nine and I think that was when the light bulb in my head kind of went off because that was an opportunity where I can start using my voice because I saw another woman use her voice and that in my culture wasn't a thing. Shortly after that workshop she reached out via Instagram and said that she wanted to stay in touch. Now Teresa works at Project Rocket. She's one of our presenters heading out into schools and running these awesome workshops just like she had in school. Just like a strap. Yeah. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
One of the most important things that happens in a Project Rocket workshop is fun. It's laughter because it builds connection. If you've shared a laugh with someone in your year level who until then you had nothing to do with, then next time you see that they're struggling, you're going to have more empathy. We use real life stories and interactive discussion and role play and experiments, ultimately putting the voice in the hands of the audience. When some people get bullied, they want to keep it inside and they don't tell anyone and they think they're not good enough. When I was grade three, I was playing video games and eating chalk and we've got 10 year old kids just talking about how important it is to tackle gender stereotypes and how important it is to just be themselves. I've seen bullying and ignored it. What we try and do is have conversations about the real issues that are going on in the room. So they might be about how we can find ways to stand up to our mates when we disagree with their behaviour. I've given someone a chance and made a new friend. How can we make decisions that actually hold up our values rather than hiding who we really are. Project Rocket has seen more than 500,000 school students in the time that we've been around and that's a lot of people and it's pretty cool to think that now there are people contacting us and reaching out and saying hey I want a job I'm ready to step up and lead this work. For me that's so exciting because this was never about us. This is about starting something and now it's about handing over the mic to the next generation. I think Australia is changing, but I can see younger generations listening and learning and maybe having the empathy and the heart to heal. And to me, that's incredibly hopeful. All of us have a role to play in taking care of same-sex attracted and gender diverse people, just as the LGBTQI community can be better allies for other marginalised voices as well. You know, I think it's really important that we start looking out for each other, showing compassion for each other. Yes, we're different, but we also have so much that connects us and anyone who's had an experience of bullying knows how hard it can get. You can actually use that as a tool for kindness to connect to the people who need it most. In my experience, genuine positive change takes imagination because you have to imagine something other than the current reality. I think it takes a great deal of humility because you're gonna make fail after fail after fail. And at the end of the day, it has to be about something bigger than you. And I think that it takes kindness. Thank you so much, let's give it up for everyone. Let's give it up. I think that Lucy and Rosie being a part of the LGBTQI plus community is super powerful that they have so much to say and so much to do and just really putting that foot down and encouraging other young people to be a part of that movement. Can we give a huge round of applause to Lucy? It feels like Project Rocket is like an extension of everything I hope for and everything I want to see in the world so it's kind of um or inspiring to be part of it. Like, it's incredibly humbling. I'm proud, but I don't feel like it's mine to own.